The U.S. Department of Commerce's Bureau of Industry and Security issued a letter dated September 25 to American companies asking them to acquire a government export license before they can sell certain technology to the Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corp, SMIC, and its subsidiaries. It is another U.S. blow to the Chinese Communist Party in the chip sector after cutting off supplies to Huawei. According to documents obtained by Reuters, SMIC's subsidiaries and joint ventures in Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, Shenzhen, Ningbo, and even Italy are among those subject to export restrictions. Any supplier affected by the export order will need to apply to the U.S. government for an export license if it wants to continue supplying SMIC. The U.S. believes that exports to SMIC pose an unacceptable risk of being diverted to military end use, but SMIC argued that it has nothing to do with the CCP's military and does not make chips for military users or uses. SMIC is based in Shanghai and has operations in Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, Shenzhen, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, the U.S., and Europe, according to its website. By the end of 2019, the company had nearly 16,000 employees. Zhen Haocheng, a current affairs commentator, believes that SMIC is a big player in China's chip industry. It's impossible for SMIC's technology not to be used by the military, and it doesn't have the power to say no to the military. SMIC is working with a large defense conglomerate according to a study published by U.S. defense contractor, SOS International. Researchers from a number of universities with military backgrounds followed SMIC's product requirements to design accordingly. One of the military academies was placed on the Commerce Department's export blacklist in 2015 for allegedly designing chips for supercomputers used to simulate nuclear tests. The current U.S. sanction on the CCP is, in fact, an attack on its dual-use technology, on the CCP's ability to threaten the world. SMIC has a special place in the chip industry as a whole. So far, we know that a few companies like Huawei have chip design capabilities, but in China, only SMIC has high-end chip manufacturing capabilities. Tin said the U.S. simply can't avoid SMIC selling its products to the military or to companies restricted by the U.S. because it doesn't have enforcement power. Therefore, weakening the SMIC is the only way to decrease its support for the CCP's military or those sanctioned by the U.S. The Wall Street Journal analysis pointed out that once SMIC is included in the trade blacklist, it will not only be a matter of further widening the gap between SMIC and Taiwan's superconductor companies, but also a matter of life and death. SMIC equipment, software, and even some of its key raw materials actually come from countries led by the U.S. after this import restriction. SMIC capability has been greatly weakened. It will be difficult to develop new and higher manufacturing capabilities for some of these chips in the future. Tin pointed out that the reduction in chip manufacturing will pull the CCP backward in the whole military field, including missiles, radar, satellites, and so on. The CCP would no longer have the capital to challenge the U.S. and the ability to create threats and unrest in places such as the South China Sea. China's rocket launches have failed three times in a row this year, prompting many netizens to speculate that it's caused by the U.S. blocking the chips. Since last year, ASML, a Dutch chipmaker, has failed to win government approval on the proposal to export SMIC's manufacturing equipment. On September 24, the FBI Director Christopher Wray stated at a vaccine hearing that fundamentally, the CCP is trying to gain a leading edge by stealing information from others, rather than through self-innovation. He also pointed out in June that the CCP poses an extremely serious national security threat to the U.S., which has spent huge resources investigating more than 2,000 cases related to the CCP government, and an investigation is initiated every 10 hours on average. He also said earlier that almost all of the 1,000 attempted thefts of intellectual property that the FBI is investigating are related to China. One of the hallmarks of the CCP's theft of foreign intellectual property is its huge crowd strategy and its ubiquity. Huawei is just one of the big black hands. There are also many middle-sized black hands and countless small black hands. SMIC is one of them as well. China's former finance minister, Lu Jiwei, warned in a recent speech that China's immature 5G technology is likely to become a failed investment. In recent weeks, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has emphasized the need for the country's economy to develop an internal circulation system. In other words, having domestic sectors produce all the goods for Chinese consumption, from raw materials to manufacturing. 
She had said that the economy should create a new development pattern where domestic and foreign markets can boost each other with the domestic market as the mainstay. But Liu said that China's 5G innovations, heavily subsidized by Beijing, could become a blockage point to this internal circulation system because no applications can be found for hundreds of billions of investment. According to a September the 28th report by Hong Kong Economic Times, Liu addressed the issue during the Chinese Economists' 50 Forum held in Beijing. The ex-minister analyzed that it would be impossible to alter supply chains into complying with Xi's circulation theory and that China is unlikely to successfully gain technological advantages. 5G networking has remained a hotspot in US-China tensions as the United States has banned Chinese telecom giant Huawei from its 5G rollout and rallied other countries to do the same, citing security risks associated with Huawei's ties to the Chinese military. As of September the 5th, mainland China has built 480,000 base stations for 5G networks, with over 100 million end connections online. According to the statistics released by China's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, Liu Jiwei served as China's finance minister from March 2013 until 2016. He was among the Communist Party officials who advocated for economic reform and is well known for his outspoken character. During last year's Chinese Economists 50 Forum held on February the 16th, 2019, he criticized the supply-side structural reforms the government was pushing and condemned the practice of forming Communist Party organizations within private enterprises, which he said significantly undercut their confidence by having the party intervene in corporate policies. In an interview with Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post on March the 7th, 2019, Liu expressed that he had been against the Made in China 2025 economic blueprint from the very beginning. In his opinion, the initiative, which seeks to turn China into a high-tech manufacturing powerhouse by the year 2025, is a waste of taxpayers' money. He said, I was against it from the start. I did not agree very much with it. The government wants industries to be top-notch by then, but those industries are not predictable and the government should not have thought that it had the ability to predict what is not foreseeable. Made in China 2025, issued in May 2015, was Beijing's plan to spur growth in 10 high-tech sectors, including robotics, aerospace, new energy, semiconductors and new materials. The US administration has criticized it for enabling state-sponsored intellectual property theft from American companies and institutions. On September 29, the Finnish company Nokia announced that it has clinched a deal with Britain's biggest mobile operator, BT, to supply 5G radio equipment in one of the first major wins under new CEO Pekka Lundmark. The deal will make Nokia BT's largest equipment provider and comes just months after Britain said it would ban China's Huawei technologies from next-generation 5G telecom networks. The size of the contract was not disclosed. A source familiar with the matter said that Nokia has won 63% of the BT contract, or about 11,600 radio sites. Nokia currently powers BT's network in Greater London, the Midlands, and rural locations, but the new contract will add multiple towns and cities across the United Kingdom. BT Group CEO Philip Jansen said the agreement will allow it to continue the rollout of fixed and mobile networks with digital connectivity critical to UK's economic future. Under the current ban, UK operators will not be able to purchase 5G components from Huawei from the end of this year and must remove all existing Huawei gear from the 5G network by 2017, offering opportunities for Nokia in Swindon's Ericsson. According to data from Moody's, Nokia had a 21% share of the global radio access network market in 2019, versus 29% for Ericsson and Huawei's 31%. The U.S. State Department released a report last week listing the CCP's 11 major environmental abuses in recent years. Experts assert this report further demonstrates the illegitimacy of the Chinese Communist regime. 
The report, titled China's Environmental Abuses, was released on September 25th. The 11 abuses listed are greenhouse gas emissions, the ozone layer, air quality, mercury, wildlife trafficking, illegal logging and associated trade, waste management, China's One Belt, One Road initiative, marine debris, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing worldwide, and Mekong water manipulation. The report claims that the CCP is the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases, the largest source of marine debris, the worst perpetrators of illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, and the world's largest consumer of trafficked wildlife and timber products. While the Chinese people have suffered the worst environmental impacts of its actions, Beijing also threatens the global economy and global health by unsustainably exploiting natural resources and exporting its willful disregard for the environment through its One Belt, One Road initiative. Tragically, the Chinese Communist Party represses civil society and a free press, slowing changes that would benefit its citizens and people all over the world, the report read. As Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has said, too much of the Chinese Communist Party's economy is built on willful disregard for air, land, and water quality. Every scientific aspect mentioned in this U.S. report on the CCP's destruction of the environment is true. Moreover, we need to have a clear understanding as to why the CCP is doing this. The CCP has a fundamental goal, which is global expansion of its influence through totalitarianism and eventually replace the United States to become a world leader, to control the rules related to the international order so as to achieve their dominance of the entire human destiny and dominate the international order. Just as stated in the Communist Manifesto, ruling the entire world is the fundamental goal of the Communists. In the air quality section, the report says, In 2008, U.S. diplomats installed air quality monitors on top of U.S. Embassy Beijing. We shared the data publicly and revealed what local residents already knew. Beijing's air quality was dangerously worse than the Chinese government was willing to admit. The report also points out that China's unsafe industrial processes make it the world's largest emitter of mercury, a neurotoxin and a major public health threat when allowed to pollute air, water, and soil. China leads the world in mercury air pollution from its own coal-burning power plants, as well as the plants that Chinese state-owned companies finance, build, and operate in other countries. The CCP, due to its evil and demonic nature, in order to achieve its fundamental goal, it does not care about the interests of mankind, including protection of environment, resource, and climate, etc. None of these are the CCP's political concerns. It pursues only one goal, controlling the whole world. According to the report, China has been the world's largest annual greenhouse gas emitter since 2006. China's total emissions are twice that of the United States and nearly one-third of all emissions globally. China is also the world's largest consumer of trafficked wildlife and illegal timber products. It drives illegal logging in producer countries, feeds associated trade in illegally harvest products worth 52 to 157 billion per year, and fuels corruption and transnational organized crime. In addition, at least 13% of China's domestic plastic waste is unmanaged and released or dumped directly into the environment as pollution, translating into millions of tons per year. The plastic waste China dumped into the ocean costs the maritime, fishing, and tourism industries billions of dollars every year and threatens food security and public health, the report says. Residents near Taihu Lake in Suzhou City, Jiangsu Province, revealed to NTD TV that the water in Taihu Lake has been seriously polluted because of the unregulated overdevelopment around the lake. The water from Taihu Lake used to be very clean. Now I need to buy drinking water from a reservoir. Who caused the water shortage in a lake town? It is a man-made disaster caused by the Industrial Revolution. In particular, the Chinese government has built dams everywhere and turned lakes into land for the sake of economic development, destroying the ecology and water system in our area. The fish and shrimps inside the lake have all been polluted, and there was also overfishing going on. The ecological chain is getting worse and worse. The report also criticizes China's unsustainable fishing practices, saying that the CCP subsidizes its fishing fleet including distant water fishing fleets operating on the high seas and in other countries' waters. These vessels routinely violate the sovereign rights and jurisdiction of other coastal states, fish without permission, and overfish licensing agreements. China's manipulation of the Mekong River is also a major environmental abuse. Mekong is the seventh longest river in Asia that starts from Tibetan Plateau and runs through China, Myanmar, Laos, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam.
The U.S. report says China's operation of its cascade of mega dams, opaque water management practices, and unilateral alteration of water flow in the upstream portion of the Mekong River have resulted in catastrophic consequences for its downstream neighbors. Ruling under the CCP, the disappeared and dead have gradually become the norm in China. Dissidents, human rights lawyers, or anyone the CCP wants to suppress and control can all become victims. Today we will focus on a few people who have disappeared for many years. On August 1, 2018, when Shandong scholar Sun Wenguang was interviewed by The Voice of America, the CCP broke into the house and forcibly arrested him. The incident shocked the world. On August 13, Sun Wenguang, who was released home, complained to a VOA reporter. Uh, this is the last time Sun Wenguang's voice has been heard. On August 12, 2020, a person familiar with the matter revealed to Radio Free Asia that Sun Wenguang evaporated after August 15, 2018. Sun Wenguang's friends told NTD TV that while the outside world was paying less attention to Sun Wenguang's incident, the CCP put him under house arrest, cutting off all external communication channels and tools. <laughs> Another dissident who was evaporated from the world is Chongqing street speaker Han Liang. Han Liang's father was a Nationalist Party of China officer. He often wears clothes made with the flag of the Republic of China, giving speeches on the streets, telling the truth about the civil war between the Nationalist Party and the Communist Party, and talking about democracy and the rule of law. In an interview with NTD TV in 2016, Han Liang said that he was actively persuading his friends to quit the Chinese Communist Party. Becoming the thorn in the eye of the CCP, Han Liang was arrested dozens of times. At the end of 2018, an insider told the Epic Times that Han Liang had been illegally detained for one year and would be sentenced at a later date. Han Liang wanted to hire a lawyer, but the CCP did not allow it. Han Liang's friend Xiao Chengyun asked about his situation everywhere, but everyone, including some people who might know Han Liang's current situation, remained silent. Xiao Chengyun has no way of knowing whether Han Liang is alive or dead. Hu Jun, a human rights activist in Xinjiang and founder of the China Human Rights Movement organization, also lost contact with the outside world in mid-November 2016. One month before his disappearance, Hu Jun told NTD TV that he was controlled by the police at home for reporting on the veteran rights defense incident. His cell phone was blocked and the internet was disconnected. After that, Hu Jun disappeared again. Gao Zhisheng, a human rights lawyer known as the Conscience of China, disappeared from his residence in northern Shanxi in August 2017. The China Aid Association in the U.S. stated in a press release on April 21st this year that Gao Zhisheng, who was under house arrest at the time, was secretly rescued to Shanxi by his supporters on August 23, 2017. However, the police found him 23 days later and detained him again. It was once reported that he was taken back to Beijing, but Gao Zhisheng's family and lawyers were not notified. Gao Zhisheng has defended the rights of vulnerable groups in China for a long time. He has issued many open letters to the top leaders of the CCP, demanding to stop persecuting Falun Gong. 
The China Aid Association awarded Gao Zhisheng the 2019 Lin Zhao Freedom Award. Gao Zhisheng's wife Gong He wrote a letter to U.S. Secretary of State Pompeo and the U.S. government on August 9, 2020. The letter stated that many courageous and sacrificed dissidents have fought tirelessly with the CCP, issuing warnings to the free world of the evil nature of the CCP regime. Attorney Gao Zhisheng is one of the prominent ones. As a candidate for the Nobel Peace Prize, he speaks for the persecuted vulnerable groups. In the past 15 years, he has been arrested, detained, tortured, and disappeared countless times. The last disappearance was three years ago. Gong He urged the U.S. government to use all possible means to rescue whistleblowers like Gao Zhisheng.